guys tribal chief over here if you're new be sure to stick around by liking and subscribing most importantly for more content now we're gonna get right into it it's football this week specifically Neymar but before I get into Neymar I do just want to cover up the football that I've watched since um, Sunday at the moment it's only been one match at the time of recording I'm gonna be getting ready to watch the um, Super Cup Sevilla versus Man City but that's one half of Manchester. Let's go to the other half of Manchester. The one that plays at Old Trafford. The one that even played at Old Trafford on Monday. Manchester United. The Beat Wolves 1-0. Absolute disgrace, man. Absolutely dis... Fuck. Absolutely... I can't even speak. Uh, but it was an absolute disgrace. If you saw what happened... Granted, Wolves wasted so many chances. They should have really scored at least four goals. Well, my United came away with the win. Van Hedda in around the 75th minute and even after that we had Onana clearly take out a man but no penalty given and it's the type of incident that you look at and you'd be like ah oh, if this happened anywhere else on the pitch and if this was an outfield player it's clearly a free kick but yeah man it's just your standard um Premier League refereeing you know deny a clear penalty and then after the game come out and be like oh you know what it actually should have been a penalty my mistake Oof. so imagine now come may wolves get relegated and th they get relegated by a point so yeah obviously with chelsea now you know we got Casado already and i've seen that he has taken the number 25 recently worn not recently last worn by um Gianfranco Zola one of our legends he contacted um you know he contacted Zola explained to him why he wants that number that's the number he wore at Brighton that number is special to him and his family so yeah Caicedo 25 on the back of the shirts and also today Chelsea's um you know we, we've officially released our home shirts but they sold out in record time it's still like crazy um but yeah, Caicedo number 25 <clears throat> and to be honest, I waited quite some time to record this video because I was waiting for the confirmation of Lavia and Olise but yeah, <clears throat> current time, <clears throat> 7 minutes past 6, still nothing um, so yeah, we're just going to get on with it anyways because it's, it's, they are pretty much our players definitely Lavia because I've seen this done the medical so for him, we're definitely waiting for the official announcement. And then Olise, um, I believe Palace have actually accepted the, um, I think we paid his release clause or something like that. So they've actually accepted it. We just we just need him, to, we just need Olise to pass the medical and then he'll be unveiled. So hopefully tomorrow they are both unveiled. But, um, oh yeah, also Kepa. <coughs> Yeah, Kepa, um, it was made official the other day that he's gone on loan. No loan with obligation to buy. So Real Madrid are just going to get him for a year. And then after the season's done, he's coming right back to us. I actually saw that he was saying he hopes that Real Madrid keeps him after the loan. And to be honest, pretty much 95% of the fan base hope that Real Madrid actually buy him permanently. Like, we don't care, man. Um, obviously, we've got Robert Sanchez now. Hopefully, we get some, you know, and not, and some more goalkeepers. But, yeah, that's Kepa gone for the year. And uh, for now, I would say that's it regarding Chelsea news. Literally just waiting for Lavia to be made official and Olise as well. And now, the main event of today's video, what well, I really wanted to talk about Neymar so he's left PSG he's gone to um, Al Hilal and um, yeah crazy 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 contract offers there to be honest but um, yeah I just want to talk about his career because obviously you know he had the highest of ceilings he was meant to take the mantle um, of GOAT off of Ronaldo and Messi and obviously he didn't really achieve that stuff in it he didn't achieve the levels that were set for him <clears throat> and people say loads of people have been saying you know he basically failed at PSG because you know when you go to PSG they're like 
PSG winning the league and the cups, it's a given. It's all about I, I, can you win the Champions League? That's it. Like, and obviously he didn't deliver a Champions League. He came close in 2020, but then he lost his shooting boots. Um, him and Mbappe and Di Maria, they all lost their shooting boots, didn't it? Um, but you see, the thing is, I want us to do a little breakdown on his career. They say um, <clears throat> he needed Messi to help him win the champs in 2015, and he left. Barcelona, you know, to get out of Messi's shadow. And then he, you know, he obviously he then got put into the shadow of Kylian Mbappe. And obviously he didn't deliver the Champions League. So it's basically a failure. Um what I saw 173 appearances and um 118 goals. Um what else was there? Obviously he's won countless trophies. Um I'm going to bring up all the stats because obviously I'm going to read from Transfer Market and obviously I'll put the um, the statistics, I'll attach them to the video in it. But um, for me, has he failed at PSG? Now, he's won, one, one thing about Neymar, he's done something that not, I don't think anyone else can say this, he's won a trophy, at least, at least one trophy in every single season of his career. That's starting from Santos to Barcelona to PSG, and obviously at Al Hilal, that's the best team in Saudi as well. So he's, you know, he's going to keep winning there. So, but he, you know, consistent winner. So in that regards, in terms of winning everything, <clears throat> I know people like to do all this art. Uh, winning in France, winning with PSG is like is not really an achievement. At the end of the day, it is, and obviously he's been a key player. But like, also he also won something with Brazil as well. Not not the Copa America, not the World Cup, one of the, one of them um, lesser trophies, I believe. Um, but obviously, you know, being compared to Ronaldinho, who's <clears throat> who actually completed football and won the Ballon d'Or. Um, I think it was two thousand and five, uh, or was it six? I think it was five. But either way, yeah, I think he's had a very successful career. The problem is, you see, if if it wasn't someone that had a ceiling as Neymar. We'll look at that career, we'll say it's very, very successful. But you see the ceiling Neymar had. He achieved so much, but yeah, it still looked at as a failure. Only because he didn't win the Champions League with PSG. And it's not like he hasn't won the Champions League already. He won it with Barcelona. You could argue that he was one of their best players in the tournament. The guy even won the Golden Boot, the Champions League Golden Boot that season. But apparently it was Messi that carried him. But anyways, man, let, we'll get to the statistics. Like, right now we'll get to the statistics, because that's mainly what I want to talk about. But overall, no, I don't think his career has been a failure. Sure, he had a much, much higher ceiling and he just didn't achieve it. But what he's accomplished in football, like, fam, most men won't even accomplish even a tenth of what he's accomplished. So for me, he hasn't failed. He just, he just, didn't, hit, he just didn't hit that ceiling. But that's the ceiling that other people set for him. If you ask him if he's had a successful career, if he's proud of everything that he's done, if he tells you he gave, he gave it everything, then you can't, you know, you can't, you know, you can't. What's the word? You just can't deny that. If you if you were to ask him if he's happy with what he's achieved and he says yes, then you can say he's been very successful, isn't it? But yeah, let's let's bring the statistics out. Okay. So looking at his stats per club, let's just analyze. We'll talk about Santos and Barcelona as well, just for the sake of it. Altogether, 498 appearances to date. So when he makes his second appearance for Al Hilal, that'll be his fifth hundredth career appearance, which is very good. And um, 295 goals, 190 assists. Obviously, so for Santos, yeah, he got 72 goals, 37 assists in 139 games. For Barcelona, he played 180, 186 scoring 105 and assisting 76 but then PSG where he's been for six seasons 173 games 118 goals and 77 assists now for a normal person you're looking at that thinking that's a really that's actually really good you know um, especially if they're a, like an event an attacking player like a winger or striker you're looking at 118 <clears throat> in 173 but and you're thinking that's that's really good you know return on investment but this is Neymar Six seasons, he ain't even passed the two hundred appearance mark. He ain't even come close. You know, you, he's not. He didn't even come within twenty five appearances of two hundred. Like, if if you've spent, what was it that he went for? Uh, was it one hundred ninety seven million euros? 
if you're going for that much in six seasons so you certainly have to have be making what at least 200 250 if not if not 250 therefore at least 200 210 appearances but look at what all them injuries did so like in that regard um 118 and 173 in six seasons after costing was it 197 um yeah come on you look at that and you think nah that's just not good enough man like that really just it's just not good enough and that's you just can't deny that man like i said for a normal person that would have been a decent record but when you've when you've gone for it's mainly called the price tag it when you've gone for that much that's just not good enough i'm also gonna um you know champions league in it let's just talk about the champions league quickly 41 appearances for psg and uh, 22 goals and 17 assists and very similar numbers for barcelona he had 40 appearances for barcelona 21 goals and uh 19 assists so one more game for psg one more goal and um yeah so in the champions league you look at the, you look at that I, I think for anyone those are good stats i mean of course unless you're cristiano ronaldo in it but even when he had made 41 appearances um he hadn't even got i don't think he he even had 20 goals um by by, by appearance 40 because I'm, I'm aware that in his first 25 games in the Champions League, he didn't score a single goal. But um, yeah, them Champions League um, numbers there, 22 goals in 41 games. It's, it's all right, man. And now, what I want to talk about next is actually the Champions League. We're going to start with um, his performance in the 2019-20 season. His closest, you know, getting to the final against Bayern Munich. We're going to look at his stats there. He played seven games, he got three goals and four assists. Now, that, that looks good. Obviously, that's the season where he reached the final. That, that looks good. You'll, you'll look at anyone and be like, those are decent. Seven goals and assists in seven games. And we're going to look at the 14-15 season. 12, 12 games, because obviously, he, he played pretty much every game, including the final. And uh, he scored 10 goals. He didn't register a single assist, but 10 goals in 12 games, and you've won the Champions League that season. That... That's fantastic. So we're in the 2019-20 season here. We're going to analyse the performances, isn't it? So um, Group A, he, he actually missed the first four group stage games. The um, suspension through, what's that say? Sports, sports court. I don't know what court cases were going on there, but he missed the first two games. Um, regardless, uh, PSG did win them games. They beat Real Madrid 3-0 and Galatasaray 1-0. And then he had a hamstring injury, so he missed both games against Club Bruges. But PSG won them 5-0 and 1-0. So now, he was, he was here for the last two um, group stage games. And, um, yeah, Real Madrid 2-2. He wasn't involved in the goals. Galatasaray 5-0, a goal and two assists. But obviously, we're here for the knockouts now, innit? So how well did he do that season? So, um, Borussia Dortmund away and home. He got the goal, but the team lost 2-1. And then he got another goal in the return leg when the team won 2 0. So, yeah, that's good. You could say that, you know, granted that goal was in the 90th minute, but obviously he did, he did what he needed to do. And, um, yeah, with them, with them getting their away goal, and, you know, that obviously helped them go through. Um, so then there was Atalanta in the quarter finals. It looks like he only played one game. I'm seeing they won 2 1. I know he got an assist, so there, a goal involvement there. And then um, the semi finals, the, he was there in the away fixture against RB Leipzig, and he, he actually played centre forward in this game, and he got an assist. And then obviously in the final, they lost 1 0 to Bayern Munich, and he, he got nothing, obviously. But um, yeah, I'll say, I'll say he, he, did, he did his bit still, most notably, you know, against Borussia Dortmund, helping them get through the um, round of 16. And obviously he did his things. He did his thing against Atalanta and RB Leipzig. And um, yeah, so obviously in the final, you know, going all the way to the final and then losing, it's not really the best thing. But I would say he had a decent, you know, he, he was involved in the goals and he, he, he came clutch in the, in the knockout rounds. So with that, yeah, 
I'd, I'd say it was, it was alright. But obviously, like he lost, um, you know, he ended up losing. It doesn't matter what you do if you go to the final and lose, to be honest, man. It's all, it's all about winning here. Anyway, that, that's what I believe. The game's all about winning. But now, yeah, that, that was the best he did, isn't it? That was the best he did for PSG in Champions League. And now, obviously, we're going to go and look at what he did for Barcelona. You know, the season where they say that he needed Messi to help him win the Champions League. But I would argue that he was comfortably the best player, especially with winning the Golden Boot. Now, let's go and look at those stats for Barcelona in the 14-15 season. So, we're now in the 14-15 season. This is the season he actually won the Champions League. Probably the best season of his entire career, you would you could argue, because um, he won the league as well, didn't he? Um, but, yeah, let's look. So, he played, he played 12 games. He missed one Group F game, but it didn't matter because um, they, um, Barcelona won 4-0. But, um, yeah, look at his stats. Um, just 10 goals. Now, obviously, we, um, in the group stage, he got, he got three goals. Um, so that's fine, but obviously we go now to the, where it really matters. Um, last 16, first leg. Okay, cool. They beat Man City 2-1 away and then they beat them 1-0 at home. He didn't get any goals. Um, so cool. He was, you could say that he was some kind of passenger there, I guess. Um, but yeah, he really turned up in the quarterfinals, semifinals and the final itself. So um, yeah, quarterfinals, first leg. He got a goal in a 3-1 win against PSG and then he got two goals in a 2-0 home win against PSG. So, um, yeah, you, you can say without... I think if you even take away one of his goals here, then um, PSG go through. Um, let me even try and calculate that one quickly. Let me see. 1-3 and 2-0. That's... Um, nah. Okay, cool. That's what? What's that? My maths isn't nothing right now. I might have to pause the video still. Just to think about this, but um, it's a uh, five five one, right? Cool. Take okay, cool. You could take away his um his goal involvement as people love to do, and they win um two one. Uh, it seems. I don't know if my maths is mapping right now, but anyways, obviously he didn't know it was gonna go to PSG just a few years later. But then Bayern Munich three nil. They won three nil in the first leg at home. He he got one of the goals. In the, and then in, in the second leg um, in, in Munich, they lost 3-2. And he actually scored both of the goals in that loss. So that one, take away his three goals. And most definitely, Bayern Munich go through. Am I right in saying that? Because they scored six goals overall. Nah. Okay, cool. But still, he, he turned up in that semi-final. He turned up. He was clearly very important scoring... Three out of five of by of um, Barcelona's goals in the semi-finals, and then obviously in the final he got his goal in um, as they beat Juventus three-one, scoring in the final. Um, but yeah, that's very good. Uh, Ten goals in twelve games, very good. That's very like for anyone that um, anyone that plays in Champions League, you score ten goals and, and you actually win the thing, including a goal in the final. You look at that and you say very very good. Of course, unless of course it's Cristiano Ronaldo, man. That guy's got so many Champions League records that you learn. If he was to win with 10 goals, yeah, in 12 games, we probably think he didn't do enough. But Neymar did a lot. And, um, all, what was it? He scored, what, 10 goals? And seven of them came, sorry, six of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven, seven out of 10 of his goals came in the knockouts, including one in the final. That's very good. And now we're going to just um, compare that to Lionel Messi who they say actually carried him so with Messi I want to just look at his statistics in the, in the Champions League that season and see if that is true although if you're winning the golden boot it's quite clear that that's just not true especially with how he performed against Bayern Munich I think that that clears it up already still but um, yeah let's just have a look at Messi's stats quickly I'm not shitting on Messi, by the way. He's he's easily the second greatest of all time, behind Cristiano Ronaldo. But um, yeah, he got ten goals as well that campaign, and he also got six assists. 
So, um, yeah, however many of those six assists were to Neymar, um, I can't really be able to go and check myself. But obviously saying that, um, that Neymar was carried by Messi, I would say that's not true, to be honest. But, yeah, that's that. And, um, yeah, man. You, like I said, you can say it was the best. You can say it was the best player in that um, in that twenty fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. You can say he was the be he being Neymar. You could say Neymar was the best player in that twenty fourteen, fifteen season. But um, you know, I guess because he didn't win the Champions League without Messi, people are always gonna say Messi carried him. But if you look at the stats. You can see that Neymar very clearly held his own in that Champions League season. Cool, Neymar didn't get any assists. Messi got six assists. I'm sure a couple assists were towards Neymar. But um, Neymar winning the Golden Boot because he scored 10 goals in 12 games, while Messi scored 10, 10 in 13. Um, you know, like it's quite clear he more than carried his own. And um, yeah, it's just a shame, in it, that he couldn't win the Champions League with PSG because, because just because of that, his career is always going to be looked at as a negative, like, like, like he felt because he took the so-called easy way out, going to win um, with Paris, who already monopolised um, monopolize, uh, France as it is, but they just will never ever be um, a serious team when it comes to winning the Champions League. And now he's left and he's gone to al -Hilal. Um But I'm trying to see if there's I think there's something else that I want to look at. If not, then he's had a very good career regardless. He just didn't he just didn't achieve the heights that was bestowed upon him because he was seen as the heir. How do you even say that word? The heir to Ronaldinho's throne. That's what he was seen as, isn't it? Um, and you know, he was meant to be the guy after Ronaldo and Messi. But yeah, I think he still had a good career regardless. But that PSU thing, certainly a disappointment. So many injuries and all that stuff, you know. Six seasons, 173 appearances, 118 goals. But it cost 197 million euros. It's just not good enough still. He won multiple titles, as we're all aware. I think he won five leagues. Five league earn. But, um, yeah, he just didn't win a Champions League with PSG. And um, yeah, simply just because just because of that, you know, his career is looked at as a total failure. It's a shame, man. But um, you see, when you see Saudi, like they're taking over football now, man. And when when they make offers like they've made Neymar, which I've already attached. If I haven't attached, I'll attach at the end of this. But you see the the offers that they're making is that they are making in Saudi. So you, you can't say no to that. That's general just generational wealth upon generational wealth like it's crazy i'm seeing something like a 25 bedroom house and um so many luxury cars like it's either been attached or it's going to be attached but like honestly you, you don't turn that shit down it don't matter who you are you can talk about your morals and everything but i'm certain everyone in that same position they ain't turning that down like it's crazy man he's, he's had a very good career in it and obviously like yeah, obviously he's doing this for family. Like he, he deserves it, man. He deserves it still. Could his career have been much greater? Absolutely. But um, yeah, I think he gave a lot to the game. Gave so many wonderful moments. And um, yeah, it's just a shame that he couldn't win the champs with PSG because it's literally just because of that that his career is looked down as as, as a failure. Like if he won the Champions League, I don't think people would care that he only made 173 appearances in six seasons but he is what it is man but Neymar he's free from Europe he gets to just enjoy football in Saudi <clears throat> making you can't even say bank at this point man it's, it's not even bank man but yeah it's it's just crazy still man shout out Neymar man <laughs> even though I don't know him personally one of my favorite footballers ever for sure I wish we actually got him we were linked with him I think <clears throat> We were linked with him, I think, in like around the 2010 to 2011 season or 2011 12. But at one point, we were linked with him, and I wish we really did get him then. Not because of seeing him in the Premier League and all that nonsense, but obviously, me being a Chelsea fan 
and like yeah it would have been really <coughs> it would have been really nice because imagine getting Neymar when we were linked with Neymar and then getting Hazard a couple years later it would have been it would have been something honestly man. it would have been something still but yeah man Neymar you man just put it just put it in the comments in it if you think Neymar's career has been a failure or a success Honestly, I think Honestly, I think we should really put it into perspective, man um, Let's just look at everything that he's won And obviously, um, besides the Champions League top goal scorer In um, the 14-15 season um, It's going to be strictly team accomplishments So look, obviously he's won a Champions League already, isn't it? Five French champions Club World Cup um, Spanish champ twice Super Cup Three French Cups, three Spanish Cups, two French League Cups, one Spanish uh, Super Cup, uh, one Brazilian Cup winner, that was the one with Santos, Copa Liber Libertadores, Santos again, uh, what's that, the Copa Super Suda Americana winner, so I'm sure that's the American Super Cup, oh, it was the Confederations Cup that he won with Brazil, um, I don't think anyone gives a damn about that to be honest. And yeah, four French Super Cups. Like, yeah, he's won at least one trophy every season of his career. And you can be guaranteed that he's been a very vital, like, you know, you can, you can, you can guarantee that he's just been, like, it's not like he's been a passenger. <coughs> he's played very key roles in every club that he's been with. Like, just, he's just on, he's just on, he's just on, he's just on amazing things. And yeah, like I said, top goal scorer for the Champions League in the 2014-15 season with 10 goals in 12 games. Um, so, um, yeah, very... I think, very, uh, like I said, I think he's had a very good career. It's just that um, people look at, you know, the ceiling that he was placed on the pedestal. He's supposed to be the third best player of this generation, um, you know, after Messi and Ronaldo. And please, sensible people, we don't just talk about the ability. Say, oh, he had all this ability, technical ability, all that stuff. Like, all that stuff doesn't really mean anything if you're not available. It's part of the reason Ronaldo and Messi are the two greatest ever and have been at the top for so long. Cool, they pushed, they pushed each other and everything. But tell me, when have you ever seen them injured? Them men have been available for at least 95% of their careers. Like, them men... He, like you don't really associate injuries they're always available and obviously they had a, they had that absolute desire so maybe Neymar maybe he like I said maybe Neymar's happy with everything maybe he believes he's given everything um, but yeah man could he have done more absolutely but the career he's had is, is, is such a good career but literally just because he didn't win a Champions League with PSG that's why people say he's had a failure of a career but here's what it is, man. Like I said already, comment below. Failure or success. And yeah, man, that's it for me now. I really just wanted to talk about Neymar. Like I said, one of my favourite players of all time. I definitely enjoyed what he brought to football. He's brought a lot to football. Injuries are an ugly part of the sport. Like, if that guy um, was, you know, solid, he could, have, he could have done so much more if he was solid, um, you know. Like he could have definitely done a lot more, but yeah, injuries, man. But yeah, that's it, man. Just you know, like and subscribe. If you're new here, subscribe, it helps a lot. You know, welcome to the tribal community. I don't even know what I'm calling it still, man. But yeah, obviously, just subscribe for more, innit? And yeah, until next time, acknowledge me as always.